welcome to another one of my videos. Today's video is a little bit of a hike and then we're going to see a glimpse of a fire rescue helicopter and then we're going to hit the top of the hill and see the LA-88 Nike base. Operational August 26, 1956. One of the last of the 16 to be completed. Uh, above that middle hill you can see that tiny dot that is the fire rescue helicopter landing up there but don't worry we're gonna get a lot closer view on that one when we get up there I hope you have become a subscriber and if you have thank you for showing support of my channel <laughs> okay after that long drive from the 118 freeway we are now approaching the entrance don't forget to support the park by paying the $5 parking. Grab one of these envelopes, fill out the information, tear off the upper piece, put that in your windshield, and you're set. After I finish filling out this information, throughout the video, I'm going to tell you about some of the history of this LA-88 Nike base. The hike to the top can be very long, so I'm going to fast track this. You're going to see just clip after clip until we get up to our destination. And in case you were wondering, I'm leaving the original sound on and doing a voiceover. Alright, I'm hearing some chopper. Looks like it's coming up and around the mountainside. There it is. <clears throat> if you look real close, on the right side somebody is hanging out of the chopper you can see their legs just dangling there my guess is that they landed on the asphalt up at the top and probably did some safety maneuvers and doing some rescue practice I think he's waving let's wave back Well, it looks like the individual got themselves back inside the uh, chopper. I guess that was just part of the training, huh? Since some hiking is involved and we are in rattlesnake territory, I want to give you one of my hiking tips. Always walk in the middle. It gives you some reflex time if you're attacked. I can hear the chopper coming back around. It'll give me a chance to catch my breath here. When you last saw it, it was heading north. Uh, there it is. Uh, they're going south. My guess is towards Santa Monica. If they are heading a little bit more to the right, I would say the LA International Airport, but they look like they're heading towards Santa Monica. Almost out of breath and coming around this corner, we look up to our right at the top of the hill and see part of the Nike base. Hey, remember Bert, the duck and cover turtle? I still remember in the latter part of elementary school we had duck and cover drills. You push your chair back, you get under your desk. Well, we were kids back then. We didn't know that if there was a nuclear blast, everything would just have been ashes. We have reached one of our three destinations. We're at a fork in the road, but we're going to turn right. This is the LA-88 Nike Missile Base. Well, it looks like the gate is wide open. I guess it's a welcome mat. This is what the military called a sentry box. This guy would also have a guard dog with him. And there are guard dogs patrolling the entire inside and outside areas of the facility, day and the night. Here's a little bit more on the duck and cover. Children in school were taught duck and cover drills. 
Duck and cover drills are still practiced today as earthquake drills in California. For 18 years, the local base was bustling with over 100 military personnel whose motto was, if it flies, it dies. To our right is the wreck and mess hall. We're going to bypass that for the moment. If you look through the fence here, you can see the administration facility. And that's the second of our three destinations. Now, not shown to our left would be the athletic court on the top of the mound here. The first building there that you see, that tiny little thing hiding under the tree, is a paint and storage building. That's where they kept their paint. <laughs> and stored stuff. Mm. Duties range from pulling weeds, guard duty, KP, painting, and regular drills. What we have here is a shot up, burnt up bus that obviously was left behind by the LAPD. There would be no military use for a RTD bus, Rapid Transit District, back then. I guess I'm with a loss of words. I'm trying to figure out why the LAPD would need to shoot up a bus. Is this some sort of training to save the people in the bus? I don't get it. Anyway, I'm sure that the bus being burnt out has nothing to do with the police. I'm sure that's just some kids up there that did that. And don't forget that um, us taxpayers bought those buses. So there it sits, rusting away. Now we're getting into the meat of things. This is the missile assembly and test building. Uh, on the left side there is a small storage unit where I would imagine they kept a lot of the parts that they need. As we leave the exciting world of storage and warehousing, we're going to move over to the assembly and test building. Now, I wonder what process they use to test the missiles. Growing up in the 50s and 60s with the threat of nuclear attack, you would have been familiar with the civil defense test sirens sounding off once a month on Friday at 10 a.m. If it had been a real warning, you would have found the closest fallout. Well, it looks like somebody out there is into BDM. And that doesn't mean business develop management. It means bondage and discipline, or bondage, discipline, and masochism. Yes, sir. I've worked in warehousing nearly my entire life, but it doesn't take a genius to realize there's an office there and we're coming around to probably the tool issue and sign out area for this room. Through that small door there to the left is probably the room they would store and lock all the tools. This Nike base was hard to complete due to the rugged terrain and only one usable road through Browns Canyon. Construction difficulties leveling a mountain peak and also digging deep into the ground for the three underground launchers caused delays. Straight ahead and to the bottom I see a white face there and for some reason it looks like a skeletal William Shakespeare and I wish I got a better shot of it. I don't know how I missed it while I was there. Uh. During a period of government budget cutbacks and after the Nike Hercules was included in a U.S. Soviet Union arms reduction, nearly all Nike sites in the country were shut down by 1974. 
The site was then acquired by the City of Los Angeles and leased to California Conservation Corps until 1990 in exchange for maintenance of the property. The Corps ceased in operation in 1990 due to lack of funding and the property was abandoned because of earthquakes and fire damage. In 1990, the City Council voted to transfer the missile site property from the City Department of General Services to LAPD for bomb squad and SWAT training. And here's something that sounds like some backroom dealings. General Services continue to have jurisdiction over the property while LAPD has responsibility and control of the missile site, according to the city documents. <laughs> what does that mean? Uh, one has jurisdiction while the other one has control. I don't get it. Uh, somebody would need to explain that to me. I mean, doesn't jurisdiction and control mean basically the same thing? <laughs> Looks like Lisa Simpson on some major meds. Hey, don't abuse. Here's something else that boggles the mind. Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department spokesman, I won't give the name, said that while deputies do occasionally patrol in the area, the department is also not responsible for the site. All right, we're gonna follow this sidewalk. We're gonna go straight across and go around that bend. We're coming around to what they call the warehouse building. I find fascinating is some videos I've seen on YouTube this car that's been sitting there probably hasn't been there more than three years the reason why I say that is I've seen some YouTubes up and the car isn't there now I don't know if the YouTubes were only posted three years ago or recorded longer than that but the car wasn't in any of them If you look up above, you see that beam. I believe that was used to pull the very heavy items that they would get out of the trucks. And that beam probably went a little bit more beyond what you're seeing there so that they can get it offloaded in that area. The launch area held three underground missile magazines each serving a group of four missiles for a total of 12 missiles. Here's a fun piece of information. A movie called The Big Picture, filmed at DeSoto Church, released April 6, 1959, talks about the site. Okay, we're going back the way we came, and as we go up this sidewalk, we're going to turn left. When we turn left, we're actually going east. We're going to be heading towards what they called the Ready Building. There it is. This isn't my first time at the LA-88, and in the past when I've been up here, I thought these bullet holes were done by the military but I was told that LAPD comes out here. I have a tough time believing that LAPD has the ammunition and guns that shoot holes this big. The administrative area contained the battery, headquarters, barracks, mess, recreation hall, and motor pool. The launch and administration areas were located next to each other in LA-88. LA-88 was known for being the first in Los Angeles area to have the Hercules nuclear warhead missile for use alongside the earlier Ajax missile. Going down this hallway to the left, is a restroom. For those curious, the toilet was in the back left and the sink was on the right near the middle. 
As we leave that tiny room, now this room here on the left, I definitely know that's a locker and shower room. And what's interesting about this is this seems to be the only shower in this whole general area. There are showers in the recreation room, which is near the entrance, and there are showers in the administration building, which is clear across the other way. I find it very hard to believe that these guys have one shower to share among them. There's the hole for the shower head and coming up there are the two holes for the hot and cold water. With this being the only shower in the place, you wanna share a shower? LA-88 was the first in Los Angeles area to employ canine sentry guard dogs to patrol. Decommissioned in 1972, there isn't much remaining of the base following a catastrophic wildfire in 2008. Yeah, I forgot about that. I guess that's how the buses got burnt up. Except it doesn't explain why none of the buildings are blackened. We're still heading east and looking at this building, we're looking south. Now, they call this the Gen Building, G-E-N. I don't think that meant like Admiral General. I would imagine it's just general items that they do. Based off of the floor plan, it looks like there was some computer equipment stationed in there and we'll check that out in a second. Get a glimpse of the floor. You can see those humps there. Those are where the computers sat on top of those. And yes, believe it or not, back in the mid to late 50s, they had computers. Now, here, I'm gonna focus in. There's a beehive in here, but I figure if I leave them alone, they'll leave me alone. There are three parts to the LA-88. It doesn't really specify, but part one is about six acres. That's probably the administration area we haven't seen yet. Part two, around 40 acres, and I'm pretty sure that's this area and the launch site. Okay, this little building is what they call the operator's shelter. I don't understand why it's a shelter, but that's what they call it. And speaking of acreage, for anyone who's interested, the total acres is 107.69 acres. Coming up, you can see in this lower left corner that piping or conduit was probably for the phone lines. If you're wondering if any missiles were ever fired, the answer is no. No missiles were ever fired. Okay, we're still heading east and coming up on the launch pad, but this little gem of a building is the Sentry Control Station. Now we're coming up to the main event, the launch pad. Now we're heading east-north, and these missiles here are facing north, except for those two little guys, they're facing east. Now these doors would fly open and the launch holder would bring the missile up and extend out. The next item you're gonna see are the holes left for the swamp coolers, which are pretty much all over the place. Oh, so Pita is giving? I wonder what it is she's giving. And when she's giving it, I wonder if it's good. The reason for the swamp coolers is because underneath the entire launch pad are some cubicles, some areas where the missiles are going to be when they're down underneath. And there's also a couple living sleeping spaces. So some of the men were down there. I believe they called them pit rats. Hey, there's the parking lot where I started. That's my car on the hump to the right, the little black dot. 
Everywhere you see concrete, there's a floor underneath, a whole living space. Some of these men virtually slept right next to these missiles. These are for the smaller missiles that you saw in that earlier picture. These doors would fly open and these missiles come straight up and then tilt in the direction they're going to want to fire it at. Usually to the east. <laughs> LA had a ring of 16 Nike bases. They were LA 04, 09, 14, 29, 32, 40, 43, 55, 57, 70, 73, 78, 88, 94, 96, and lastly 98. Yeah, you've been looking at another RTD bus. The reason why I know it's an RTD bus, if you look in the very right corner of that first window, it slides back and forth. And RTD stands for Rapid Transit District. That was before Metro came in. And our taxes paid for these buses. Hey, got refund? For much needed excitement, I'm going to walk away from this bus. Okay, I'm going to climb these stairs, get up to the top where I can turn around face south and show you the full platform. And when you see the pictures of the missiles, now they face north. That's the direction I am standing in. And where the missiles come out, they've dubbed them with the name of Underground Missile Storage. We're going to turn around. We're going to be heading west and passing all the items that we have already seen. We're going to go see what's at the entrance, which is the mess hall and the recreation room. Then the last stop on the way out will be the athletic court. Let's go check out this building. I don't have the best flashlight, but we'll get to see some of it. As I try to juggle a camera and a flashlight, here at this entrance is the mess room. Now, you're going to see the flashlight hit a door across the room. There it is. That is the rec room. And I know I didn't bring the greatest of flashlights, but hey, this is all I've got. Standing in the mess hall, those three doors there, the first one on the left is the bathroom, the next is the supply room, the next is the kitchen and dishwasher, and I'm only guessing. We're going to pan around the room here. Now this is the mess hall, and we're looking at some of the walls here. This mess hall doesn't really look all that big, but if I remember right, they only had a little over a hundred men here at one time. We're in the mess hall facing west, looking into the doorway of the recreation room. My guess this room is 35 by 70. Back in the day, what would have been the most popular thing would have been ping pong. I'm sure they had checkers and chess because this room isn't that big for too many things. I really wish I could have brought a better flashlight, but I don't own one. We're coming out of the rec room, and what well, wasn't that fun? There was a sink to the left and those three doors. Now, those three doors, the first one is the bathroom, the next is a supply, and the next is the kitchen and dishwasher area. And yes, I am just guessing based off of the floor plan. Of these three rooms, the first one from the left is a bathroom, and I'm basing that off of the piping that I saw going into the floor. So, it's just a guess. We're coming up on the second room, and it's pretty obvious this was a storage for food. Hey, I haven't been talking too much about directions. I should do that here. The rec room is on the west side, and the mess hall is on the east side. These three rooms are facing north because this is the only building that still has a rooftop and you can't see it from above ground. Hopefully that'll help you when you look at the diagrams. This third room off of the mess hall, I believe this to be the kitchen and dishwashing area. I'm gonna pretend that I know because those ducts there, I bet are the exhaust fans and they go out that wall. Coming up around to the right here would be the dishwashing area is my best guess. 
Okay, I think we spent more than enough time at the Mass Hall. And as we come upon this street, to the left would be the Sentry, which would be the entrance, or the exit, depending on how you look at it. We're crossing over the street and going up the mound, and we're going to go up to the top and find the Athletic Court. There's a lot of property to check out. We haven't even seen the administration side yet. That's coming up. This is the athletic court, and it's pretty worn out, as you can see. Uh, it was a basketball deck, and I saw the two structures for the hoops on either side. You saw a glimpse of the concrete foundation, and whatever it was, it took 12 bolts to hold it in place, so it must have been something pretty heavy. And as we head to the front gate, we're going to head over to item two of three. As we come out of the front gate, we're going to go straight ahead, and that leads us into the administrative area. As you heard me mumbling there, I was very surprised that this front gate is open. This is the first time in all the times I've been up there that this gate was wide open. Now this is going to be a little hard to show you in directions of where the buildings are, but I'm going to do my best. The asphalt I just walked on and came up to the gate, what you're seeing in the diagram is in the far right corner. You see that little bit of a tight sidewalk. Then you come in and that first rectangle building, that is called the multi-purpose room. Up ahead is that building. Now we're basically facing southwest. Here's where it gets a little tricky. Believe it or not, I'm coming in at the lower left corner. We are facing south and southwest. Now that very first building, as you come in, that is again the multi-purpose room. Once again, that's the lower left corner building. Hopefully you have your bearings. Now the width of the building is north-south and the length is west. Okay, we're crossing over the multi-purpose room. We're going south. We're heading up here to the mess hall. We're going to look here to the left. The entire dark area is the kitchen. I'm going to take a couple guesses here that that white concrete area could have been where the sink was and the red spot in the very back was the walk-in freezer. We're heading out to the back of that building and that's where the shipping and receiving for the goods would have come from. We will turn around to face west and the concrete area that you're seeing would be the actual mess hall. We're going to turn left here going south heading out of the mess hall and across the way there that's the first barracks area. Let's head up the way there to that corner. That's one of the entrances and this barracks is on the left side and there's another barracks that would be a little bit more to the right there. We're coming up on a couple shower and bathroom areas. The barracks come and meet right in this location, so that's probably why we're seeing two different shower areas. Standing here in the barracks, I'm on the most south side of the whole facility and complex. I'm now facing east. And coming into view, that foundation is the second barracks, which is on the west side of the facility. Using this diagram, and where I was standing during the last shot, I would be in the lower right corner facing west to get back out. Next to the big tree is the flagpole. Now we're going to turn around and go down this long stretch of road. It's going to lead us to the dog equipment and storage shed. Across from it are the dog kennels. Well, here's something I didn't know. Because the site is actually a city island on top of the Oat Mountain, LAPD officers don't regularly patrol it and rely on the fences, padlocks, and no trespassing signs to keep people out. 
but we're going to leave the kennels. We're going to head back up to the admin area and we're going to head out so that we can go to our third destination. We're coming out of the administration. Now, if we went straight, we'd be going back into the launch pad if we turn right down the hill. But we're turning left so I can show you the third feature I wanted to show you. And to do that, I've spliced these cuts in real short order so that it speeds things up. Let me try to name off some of the cities these sites are. Palmdale, El Monte, Brea, Stanton, Long Beach Airport, Fort MacArthur, Point Vincent, Redondo, LAX, Malibu, Oat Mountain, Newhall, Lake Balboa. Remember that helicopter earlier? This is where it landed. Now this is for LAPD when they patrol this end of the valley and go around to the west end and then go back to the city of LA. Currently facing southwest and came up going east, this is the whole south side of the San Fernando Valley. That's everything scanning from as far east as you can see and we're moving towards the west and at some point some of the mountains cover Simi Valley. Those mountains in the background, that's Mulholland basically. This fork in the road, we're going to turn right, which is east, and we're going to go up to as far as we can where it's private property. I did a super splice and edit job, and this is as far as we can go. If you look in the upper left corner, you'll see that white thing. That's a camera. All right, we're going to start heading back down to the car. Look at these scenes. This is what the valley basically looked like. The entire valley looked like this before the inhabitants moved in. And one thing I forgot to mention in the last piece that when we we're going left to right or east to west, if you look down in the very beginning, there's some developers and they're getting close to this mountainside. I'd like to add that you can support my channel by simply clicking the thumbs up. And thank you so much. Okay, I'm going to do another super splice edit job. We're going to go back down the hill. It's going to be really quick. What do you think? I know this video was a bit long, but the complex is big. I would love to read your comments down below. If you have oh, any ideas car, of videos man. I should do, tell me about them in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. I hope you will subscribe by clicking the subscribe button, click on the bell to receive notice of future videos, and I'll see you in the next one.